Introduction of A Taste of New Mexico Kitchens This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read by Larry Wilson A Taste of New Mexico Kitchens by Anonymous Introduction New Mexican cooking is unique to New Mexico. Stacked enchiladas topped with an egg and smothered in pungent red sauce. Tender sopapillas, rich and meaty pozole stew, green chili, and blue corn tortillas. These dishes have been mainstays of New Mexicans for generations, some remaining classics and some having changed with time, but all retaining their original essence. In New Mexico magazines, the best from New Mexico kitchens, we give you a big helping of good New Mexico cooking, from Indian Spanish basics to haute cuisine. In our second cookbook, More of the Best from New Mexico Kitchens, we offer variations on classic New Mexico dishes, forgotten favorites of the pioneers, and familiar recipes with new twists. They range from the supremely simple to more sophisticated versions. We have specialities from restaurants big and small, places you may have visited yourself, and from good cooks all over the state. As a special premium for new subscribers to New Mexico Magazine, we have put together a taste of New Mexico kitchens, a small sampling of favorite New Mexican recipes from both cookbooks. We want to share these recipes with you, the subscribers of New Mexico Magazine, with our compliments. End of Introduction Section 2 of A Taste of New Mexico Kitchens. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. A Taste of New Mexico Kitchens by Anonymous. Main Courses Part 1. Frijoles Ducalites Frijoles One would think that a boiled bean is a boiled bean, but it's not that simple, of course. Each cook thinks his or her way is the best and only method. Those who advocate the overnight soak will do it this way. Take two cups of dry pinto beans, pick them over, and wash them. Cover with cold water and soak overnight. Drain and rinse well. Put in a large pot with about eight cups of water and two tablespoons of lard. Bring to a boil and simmer gently, covered for about one and a half hours, then test for tenderness. Stir in two teaspoons of salt. Depending on how long the beans were soaked and how high your altitude is, the temperature at which things boil goes down as altitude goes up. You may have to cook the beans for up to another hour, adding more water if needed. Serve beans, broth, and all in bowls. Top with red or green chili salsa. Most people do it this way. Pick over the two cups of dry pinto beans and wash them. Put beans, eight cups of water, and two tablespoons of lard in a big pot. Some folks like to add two cloves of garlic. Bring to a boil, cover, and simmer for two hours, two and a half if you are at a high altitude. Stir in two teaspoons of salt. If you add salt too early in the cooking, your beans will be too tough. Continue cooking, adding water as necessary until beans are tender. Serve as above. Another way to cook your pinto beans is in the pressure cooker. Pick over two cups of dry pinto beans and wash them. Put beans, eight cups of water, and two tablespoons of lard into a large pressure cooker. Bring to a boil and boil gently for ten minutes without the lid on. 
remove from heat, cover and let the beans stand for about two hours or until an hour before you intend to eat. Add two teaspoons salt, cover and bring the pressure up to 15 pounds. Cook for 10 minutes, 15 or more at high altitudes. Allow pressure to drop normally. Serve as above and think of the energy you saved. Frijoles. This is the basic bean recipe. Three cups pinto beans, four quarts water, one clove garlic, one cup diced salt pork, salt. Wash beans well, cover with water, and soak overnight. Drain. Put beans, water, garlic, and salt pork, but not salt, in a large heavy kettle. Cover tightly, bring to a boil, and simmer for about one and a half hours or until the beans are tender but not mushy. Add boiling water during the cooking if necessary and stir occasionally. When the beans are done, remove lid, turn up heat, and cook until all liquid has been absorbed. Add salt to taste. Frijoles refritos. Many people think that beans are at their best on the second day when they are served as refried beans. Velomina, who has a well known restaurant of the same name in Los Alamos, recommends this classic method. To two tablespoons bacon drippings, add two cups day old cooked pinto beans. Use a potato masher for mashing and stirring beans as they fry. When beans are thoroughly hot, add four cups grated cheddar or jack cheese. Continue stirring until cheese has melted. Serve hot. Some New Mexicans also like to fry a small minced onion in the fat before adding the beans. Whatever method you use, the resulting dish is delicious. Classic New Mexico Red Enchiladas 12 blue corn tortillas 1 third cup vegetable oil 3 to 4 cups red chili sauce See section 4 on chili 3 cups grated longhorn cheese Two small onions, minced. Four eggs, optional. Fry tortillas in oil until soft and drain on paper towels. Heat chili sauce. Layer tortillas on serving plates. Topping each with grated cheese and minced onions and sauce. Stack three per serving plate and top with cheese and sauce. Put plates in oven to allow cheese to melt. Meanwhile, fry eggs in remaining oil. Top each enchilada stack with a fried egg. Serve immediately. Serves four. Green chili enchiladas. Six blue corn tortillas. Two tablespoons oil. One clove garlic. 2 cups green chili sauce, 1 tablespoon flour, 2 cups grated longhorn or jack cheese, 1 quarter cup minced onion, salt to taste. Heat the tortillas on a hot griddle and keep warm under a tea towel. Heat the garlic in the oil, then discard garlic. Blend flour into oil. Stir in green chili sauce, see section 4 on chili, and heat thoroughly. If mixture is too thick, add water. Add salt to taste. Layer tortillas with sauce, minced onion, and cheese on oven-proof plates. Sprinkle cheese on top. Place in oven to allow cheese to melt. Serves 
too. For a real New Mexico touch, place a poached or fried egg on top. The egg has the quality of melding all the flavors. Chicken, sour cream, and gelatas. Twelve corn tortillas, four cups green chili sauce, three cups minced cooked chicken, one pound jack cheese grated, one quarter cup minced onion optional, salt to taste, one pint sour cream. Heat tortillas on a hot griddle and keep warm under a tea towel. Or heat the tortillas in oil and drain well on paper towels. Mix one cup of the chili sauce, see section four, chili, for recipe with the chicken. Put one quarter cup of the chicken mixture on each tortilla and roll it up. Place in an oblong baking dish. Cover the enchiladas with the grated cheese. Add the onion, if desired, and salt to taste to the remaining chili sauce and pour over the enchiladas. Bake at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for about 20 minutes. Smother with sour cream and return to oven for 10 minutes or until everything is hot. Serve immediately. Serves 6. Pasole Sandoval Pozole is whole hominy, and in New Mexico it is cooked with pork into a thick stew. The first time you taste it, you may be unimpressed. The second time, well, you think that perhaps another helping would go down well. The third time, you're hooked. Like the rest of us, you won't think that Christmas Eve or a feast day of any kind is complete without a big bowl of steaming pasole. Richard C. Sandoval, who grew up in Nambe, prepares his holiday pasole this way. Richard uses frozen pasole, but if you can't find that, perhaps you can find dried pasole. Failing that, you might make do with canned hominy, which, of course, won't need to cook as long as the other varieties. But, as Richard points out, it won't taste as good either. Two pounds frozen pasoli, two pounds pork roast cut up, dash of oregano, three to four dry red chili pods broken up, salt to taste. Rinse pasole well. Put pasole, oregano, and chili pods in a large pot. Add cold water to about two inches above the corn. Heat to a boil and cook for 20 minutes. Add the meat, reduce heat, and simmer for about three hours until meat is cooked and kernels are soft but not mushy. You might need less time at lower altitudes than Santa Fe's. Stir frequently and add water as needed. Salt to taste at end. Serve in bowls and pass the chili sauce. Or use as an accompaniment to a dinner of enchiladas, tamales, frijoles, and chiles rellenos. The Sheds Pasoli Stew one pound lean pork shoulder, two pounds frozen pasole hominy, juice of one lime, two tablespoons coarse red chili, three cloves garlic, one quarter teaspoon dried oregano, three tablespoons salt. Cook the pork in a pressure cooker with water to cover for 20 minutes. Reduce pressure under cold water. Open pot and add pasole, lime juice, and chili. Add water about twice as much as the amount of pasole. Cook for 45 minutes under pressure. Reduce pressure under cold water. Remove the pork and cut up. Put pasole, pork, garlic, oregano, and salt in a large, heavy covered pot 
and simmer for one to three hours or until hominy kernels have burst and are soft but not mushy serve alone or as a side dish freezes well note these times are set for santa fe's high altitude at lower altitudes where the boiling point is higher you may wish to try shorter cooking times at first pozole ortiz every one has his own special recipe for pozole this is the way willie and june ortiz prepare it at la tertulia in santa fe and good it is two cups frozen white pozole hominy one quart water one pound pork shoulder or chops one eighth teaspoon oregano one teaspoon whole black peppercorns one third cup chopped onion four dried red chili peppers crumbled salt mix all ingredients in a large heavy pot bring to a boil and simmer covered for about two and a half hours or until the kernels are soft but not mushy salt to taste serves four dallas tacos dallas spanish dining room in farmington is one of the most popular restaurants in northwestern new mexico but della chavez throws up her hands in dismay and laughs at the idea of writing down her recipes one must watch to see how it is done she says this is how she prepares her tacos take ground chuck and brown it in the frying pan draining off excess fat one pound of meat will probably fill six tortillas season the meat with salsa made with chopped peeled tomatoes garlic salt chopped onions chopped red chilies the quantities della implies will depend on one's own taste when the meat is ready warm tortillas on a grill place in a bowl and cover with a towel they'll steam themselves soft fold the tortillas in half and stuff with meat pin with wooden toothpicks fry the tacos in very hot deep fat perhaps three hundred and seventy five to four hundred degrees fahrenheit for just a minute turn over then remove and drain remove toothpicks and stuff with grated longhorn cheese perhaps a half pound for six tacos shredded lettuce and finely chopped tomatoes in that order serve chicos chicos are sweet corn kernels that have been dried and saved for winter this dish is popular in the spanish-speaking villages of northern new mexico two cups chicos ten cups water two pounds pork one onion minced one clove garlic one half teaspoon oregano four chili pods two teaspoons salt wash chicos and soak overnight drain and cover with five cups of water bring to a boil and simmer for about an hour meanwhile cut pork in one inch cubes and fry until brown drain fat stir in a cup or two of water to gather up the flavorful bits at the bottom of the pan pour meat garlic oregano washed and crushed chili pods salt to taste and remaining water in with chicos cover and simmer for two and a half hours or until chicos are tender or use the pressure cooker and cook for about one hour serve in soup bowls serves six calites if you have access to wild spinach that's really what you should use in this recipe but most people make do with the tame kind 
one half pound fresh spinach or one 10 ounce package frozen spinach, one tablespoon shortening, three tablespoons chopped onion, one quarter teaspoon crushed red chili, salt to taste. Wash spinach well. Chop and steam about 10 minutes or until tender. Saute the onion in shortening. Mix in drained spinach, chili, and salt and cook for an additional 5 minutes. Serves 2 to 3. End of section 2. Section 3 of A Taste of New Mexico Kitchens. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read by Betty B. A Taste of New Mexico Kitchens by Anonymous. Main Courses, Part 2. Chalupas El Paragua. In Española's El Paragua, Luis and Francis Atencio make chalupas this way one corn tortilla vegetable oil one fourth cup refried beans shredded chicken one fourth cup grated longhorn cheese one fourth cup guacamole shredded lettuce one quarter tomato two tablespoons sour cream black olives onion rings paprika fry the tortilla and place on an oven proof plate spread with refried beans then chicken then cheese Slide under broiler to melt cheese. Quickly cover with guacamole, mashed seasoned ripe avocado, lettuce, tomato cut in bits, and sour cream. Decorate with black olives and Bermuda or Spanish onion rings. Dust cream with paprika. Serve immediately. Serves one. Arroz con pollo. This traditional Spanish recipe is one that Scotty King has adapted and serves often to her delighted guests. As Scotty points out, the dish can be prepared ahead of time as it improves with standing. This amount serves four, but the recipe can easily be doubled. One chicken or fowl cut up as for frying. Three cups boiling water, one large onion chopped, one to two cloves garlic minced, one cup raw rice washed, one quarter cup olive oil, one and one half teaspoon salt, one teaspoon paprika, one half teaspoon pepper, two sprigs parsley minced, one bay leaf, one half teaspoon saffron, two to four canned pimentos chopped, oregano, basil, thyme, optional. Put chicken in a large pot with boiling water and one half teaspoon of the salt. Cover and simmer for 20 to 30 minutes, 40 to 50 if it's a fowl. Meanwhile, mix onions, garlic, and rice. Heat olive oil in a large heavy skillet Add rice mixture and stir until oil is well mixed in. Cover and fry very gently for 10 minutes. Stir frequently and take great care mixture does not brown. Add remaining salt, paprika, pepper, parsley, bay leaf, and saffron to chicken pot. Add such optional seasonings as you like. Correct salt if need be, then spread rice mixture over the top of chicken. Cover and simmer gently until rice is soft and chicken is tender when pierced with a fork. From 40 to 60 minutes. Add the pimentos just before serving. Serves four. Calabacitas. This is one of the most popular vegetable dishes in New Mexico and deserves to be better known in the rest of the country. It's delicious. Two tablespoons oil or lard, one clove garlic, one medium onion, four medium large zucchini, one 12 ounce can niblet corn drained, one four ounce can diced green chilies or two fresh peeled chilies, salt to taste, one half cup grated cheddar, jack or longhorn cheese. In a large heavy skillet, saute the onion, garlic and zucchini in oil. Discard the garlic, mix in drained corn, chopped chilies and salt. Cover tightly and heat through. Mix in cheese and serve, serves four. Huevos Rancheros. Everyone has a special way of preparing Huevos Rancheros. This suggestion comes from New Mexico State University. Two cups green or red chili sauce, four eggs, one half cup grated cheese. Heat chili sauce in shallow frying pan. 
when hot slip eggs into sauce from small dish or saucer being careful not to break yolks cover and simmer over very low heat until eggs are poached to desired firmness serve on warm plates with remaining sauce poured over eggs sprinkle with cheese serves too use canned sauce or your own mixture red chili burritos from angie m garcia comes another of her specialties the beloved burrito four cups cooked pinto beans two teaspoons bacon fat or vegetable shortening garlic salt to taste twelve flour tortillas one eighth to one quarter inch thick one cup grated jack or longhorn cheese one half cup minced onion red chili sauce mash beans and season with garlic salt to taste fry in bacon fat heat tortillas on ungreased griddle and cover with towel to keep warm spoon hot bean mixture down the center of each tortilla roll and place two on each serving plate pour heated red chili sauce over burritos and top with cheese and onions serves six gazpacho new mexico a delectable and cooling liquid salad from spain with a special new mexico touch two pounds tomatoes peeled or two fourteen and one half ounce cans stewed tomatoes one cucumber one half green pepper one large onion one clove garlic one quarter cup olive oil one tablespoon vinegar one cup tomato juice salt to taste one four ounce can diced green chili ice cubes dice half the tomatoes being careful not to lose any of the juice half the cucumber half the onion half the pepper set aside in a large bowl or pitcher put the remaining tomatoes cucumber peppers and onion into a blender along with the garlic olive oil vinegar tomato juice salt to taste and green chili blend for a few seconds pour into container with chopped vegetables mix well cover and chill thoroughly serve with two or three ice cubes in each bowl sprinkle with garlic croutons or serve with hot garlic bread serve six to eight tamale pie this particular version is the specialty of a young gallop girl who adapted it from an aunt's recipe one and one half cups leftover meat chopped one cup leftover gravy one cup red chili sauce one small onion chopped one can niblet corn drained salt and pepper to taste garlic powder optional three cups water or stock three quarter cup yellow corn meal salt to taste heat meat with gravy chili sauce onion and corn and season to taste meanwhile boil stock or water and stir in corn meal cook stirring over low heat until mush is thick turn meat mixture into casserole and top with spoonfuls of corn meal mush evenly distributed over surface bake at 350 degrees fahrenheit for about 40 minutes chili pie not really a pie this is more like a quiche without a crust delectable as a main dish for lunch it could also make a light supper and how about doubling the recipe making it in a rectangular baking dish and cutting in small squares to serve at a party four to six whole green chilies one cup grated jack or longhorn cheese four eggs one cup scalded half and half or one cup evaporated milk one half teaspoon garlic salt line a buttered eight or nine inch pie pan with chilies fresh canned or frozen sprinkle with the cheese beat eggs and combine with half and half and garlic salt pour over cheese bake at 325 degrees fahrenheit for about 40 minutes or until the custard has set cut in wedges and serve serves four end of part two of main dishes Section 4 of A Taste of New Mexico Kitchens. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read by Jen Broda. A Taste of New Mexico Kitchens by Anonymous. Chili. Preparing Fresh Chili. Select plump, fresh New Mexico-grown chili pods, either green or red. The variety of the chili will determine how hot it is. 
see Chile, New Mexico's fiery soul, and the Nakayama scale in the best from New Mexico kitchens. New Mexico No. 6 and Anaheim are two of the mildest varieties, and New Mex Big Jim rates number three on a scale of ten. The sizzling jalapeno is only number seven. Slit pods lengthwise and remove seeds and veins, which make chilies far too hot for most palates. Place pods on a foil-lined cookie sheet under broiler, or place pods on an outdoor grill. Roast pods, turning frequently so they don't burn. When chili skins are blistered and loose, remove from fire, tongs would be handy for this, and cover with damp towels until cool. Peel skins from stem downward. Chilies are then ready to use or freeze for the future. If you want to save your own skin from being blistered by the chilies, you had better wear thin rubber gloves while you work. Green chili sauce. One-fourth cup salad or olive oil. One clove garlic, minced. One-half cup minced onion, optional. One tablespoon flour. One cup water. One cup chopped green chili. Salt to taste. Sauté garlic and onion in oil in heavy saucepan. Blend in flour with wooden spoon. Add water and green chili and mix well. Add salt. Bring to a boil and simmer, stirring frequently, for five minutes. The Owl Bar's Green Chili The Owl Barn Café in San Antonio, south of Socorro, has become world-renowned, literally, for its huge, juicy hamburgers. It has been featured in New Mexico Magazine, TWA's Ambassador Magazine, and The Washington Post. But the café is also known for its atmosphere, and it's green chili. The secret, says Rowena Baca, the owner, is in the simmering. Three and a half pounds hot green chili. One and a half pounds hamburger meat. Three cloves garlic, minced. Two quarts water, salt to taste. Roast, peel, and dice green chili. In a heavy skillet, brown the meat and drain excess fat. In large heavy saucepan, Cover chili and garlic with water and bring to boiling point. Mix in the meat and simmer, tightly covered, for at least three hours. Add salt to taste. Green Chili Stew Rosella Frederick of Cochiti is known for her good cooking. One of her specialties is her green chili stew. For feast days, she usually makes enormous pots of stew outside over an open fire in order not to heat up her spotless kitchen. She has cut down her recipe to family size for us. Two pounds lean chuck, lard or cooking oil, one half medium onion, chopped, four medium potatoes, optional, four medium zucchini, optional, 12 large green chilies, roasted, peeled, and cut in pieces, or one seven-ounce container frozen chopped green chili or two four-ounce cans chopped green chili, one teaspoon garlic salt, one teaspoon salt, six to seven cups water. Cut the meat up into very small pieces, about two-inch cubes, and brown in a little oil in a large, deep, heavy pan. Add the onions. Peel and dice the potatoes and brown them with the meat. Rosella does not flour the meat because it makes the stew too thick for her family's taste. When the meat and onion and potatoes, if used, have been browned, drain off any excess fat. Add the zucchini, if used, the chilies, garlic salt, salt, and water. Bring to a boil and simmer for at least a half hour. Ladle into bowls and serve with homemade bread. The stew should be eaten with a spoon, like a hearty soup. Serves 6. Red Chili Sauce 1. This is Mark Knoll's traditional recipe, made from whole, dry red chili pods, the kind that hang on every doorside ristra in New Mexico, or are bought in big plastic bags at supermarkets and roadside stands. Wash and remove seeds, stems, and white veins. The more seeds and veins you leave in, the hotter the sauce will be. Place pods in a large kettle and cover with boiling water. 
Cook the pods until they become plump and tender. Remove pods and run them through your blender or processor. In the old days, they used a food mill or fruit press. Strain the mixture to remove pieces of skin and stray seeds. Add some of the water you use to cook the pods in order to get the consistency of tomato paste. To this, add three tablespoons fat, several cloves of minced garlic, one teaspoon dried oregano, and one teaspoon salt. Bring sauce to a boil, reduce heat, and simmer for about 45 minutes. This is your basic red chili sauce and the smoothest you can make. To this, you can add pinto beans, meat, onions, or tomatoes to construct your favorite New Mexico recipes, or use as is to go over burritos or enchilada plates. Red Chili Sauce 2 3 tablespoons olive oil or lard 1 clove garlic, minced 1 half cup New Mexico chili powder 2 tablespoons flour 2 cups water Salt to taste Sauté the garlic in oil. Blend in flour and chili powder quickly with a wooden spoon. Be careful not to burn the chili. Blend in water and cook to desired consistency, adding more water as desired. If you have stock instead of water, so much the better. Add salt to taste. Salsa Two tomatoes medium size, one Bermuda onion medium size, one clove garlic, one half teaspoon salt, two or more green chilies. Use fresh chilies, roasted, peeled, and seeded, or frozen or canned chilies. Chop the chilies, tomatoes, and onion very fine. Don't lose the juice of the tomatoes. Mash the garlic with the salt. Mix well. Add more chilies to suit your taste. Allow flavors to blend at least an hour before using. Store in refrigerator or freezer. Use on tacos, eggs, or hamburgers, or as a dip for tostados. Makes about one pint. Pueblo Red Chili Stew This recipe comes from Santa Clara Pueblo from the Joseph Lone Wolf family. 10 pounds stew beef, 2 gallons water, 2 tablespoons salt, 5 pounds potatoes, 2 cups red chili powder, 1 half cup blue cornmeal. Cut meat into 1 inch cubes. Cover with water and bring to a boil in a large kettle. Reduce heat to simmer and cook, covered, for about 4 hours. Meanwhile, peel and cube potatoes. Add potatoes and salt and cook for 1 and 1 half hours. Measure red chili powder and cornmeal into bowl with enough cold water to make a paste. Stir slowly into stew. Mix in well to thicken broth. Simmer for a half hour, then keep warm. Teresa Lone Wolf figures on serving about 75 people on a feast day, but of course, not everyone eats a lot of any one dish. If this were the main dish at a picnic or supper, it might serve 25 to 35 persons. Green Chili Souffle This happy marriage of green chili to a souffle was engineered by Edna Turner of Santa Fe. Five egg whites, two tablespoons grated Parmesan cheese, three tablespoons butter, three tablespoons flour, one cup hot milk, one half teaspoon salt, one fourth teaspoon dry mustard, dash cayenne, one fourth teaspoon Worcestershire sauce. 4 egg yolks, pinch salt, 1 cup shredded sharp cheddar cheese, 1 fourth to 1 half cup chopped green chili. Place egg whites in a four-quart bowl and let stand at room temperature one hour. Heat oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Butter one and one half quart souffle dish generously. Sprinkle bottom and sides evenly with Parmesan cheese. Melt 3 tablespoons butter over low heat in heavy saucepan. Add flour and stir with wire whisk. Cook over low heat, stirring constantly until mixture foams and bubbles. Remove from heat, add milk, and beat until smooth. Beat in salt, mustard, cayenne, and Worcestershire. Return to heat and cook one minute, stirring constantly until mixture is quite thick. 
Remove from heat and add egg yolks one at a time, beating well after each addition. Pour this mixture into a large bowl. Beat egg whites with a pinch of salt until stiff peaks form. Add one large spoonful to the egg yolk mixture and blend. Add all but one tablespoon of the cheese and the chopped chilies, frozen fresh or canned, to the egg yolk mixture and blend well. Spoon remaining egg whites on top and fold in with a rubber spatula. Pour into souffle dish and smooth with spatula. Sprinkle remaining cheese on top. Run a silver knife in a circle about one inch from the edge of dish. This will enable the crown or hat to form when done. Place in center of oven and reduce to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. Bake 34 to 40 minutes or until knife inserted in the side comes out clean. Serve immediately. End of section 4. Section 5 of A Taste of New Mexico Kitchens. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. A Taste of New Mexico Kitchens by Anonymous. Favorite Foods Tostados Cut fresh or canned corn tortillas into triangles and deep fry in oil at 380 degrees Fahrenheit until they are crisp. Drain on paper towels. Sprinkle with salt. These are the original corn chips. Use with dips, soups, or beverages. Nachos. Prepare tortillas as above. While they are still hot, Sprinkle with onion or garlic salt and chili powder. Or, sprinkle the chips with grated longhorn cheese, chili powder, and garlic salt. Then heat in the oven until the cheese melts. Or spread each chip with a bit of mashed beans. Season with red chili powder or a bit of fresh chopped green chili. Sprinkle liberally with grated longhorn cheese. Add a touch of garlic salt and broil until cheese melts. Chili con queso. Two tablespoons butter or margarine. One medium onion, minced. One clove garlic, minced. One tablespoon flour. One thirteen-ounce can evaporated milk. One pound longhorn cheese, grated. Salt to taste. One and a half to one cup chopped green chili. Saute minced onion and garlic in butter in large heavy saucepan. Blend in flour with wooden spoon. Add milk and cheese. Stir constantly until cheese is melted and mixture is smooth and thick. If mixture seems too thick to use as a dip, Blend in a little water. Mix in the chopped green chili, fresh, frozen, or canned, to suit your taste. Serve in a chafing dish with tostados, corn chips, or raw vegetable sticks to dip in the mixture. Bill's guacamole. Six to eight ripe avocados. One quarter cup finely chopped onion. One large tomato diced. One half cup chopped green chili, two to three minced jalapeno peppers, one clove garlic minced, dash of cumin powder, one teaspoon lemon juice, salt to taste. Peel and pit avocados. Mash coarsely with a fork, leaving bits of whole avocado. Stir in remaining ingredients. Serve on lettuce or as a dip with tostados. Chunky guacamole. One large ripe avocado. One medium tomato. One small onion. One small bell pepper. Three long green chilies. Juice of one half lemon. Salt to taste. Chop all the ingredients fine. Do not mash. 
use fresh roasted and peeled chilies, but if they are not available, use canned or frozen. Mix together with the lemon juice and add salt to taste. Serve as a dip or as a salad with lettuce and corn chips. Roswell Bean Dip This old favorite has a number of variations. We like this one. Two cups refried beans. One cup sour cream. One quarter cup taco sauce. Mash beans well or run through blender. Mix in sour cream and taco sauce. Serve with corn chips or vegetable sticks. No taco sauce? Try chopped green chili or enchilada sauce or chili powder to taste or a minced jalapeno. Avocado soup, Las Cruces. Maggie Gamboa of Las Cruces is a famous cook in southern New Mexico. Not only does she cater for parties, but she teaches cooking, including a chili gourmet class. One medium tomato. One tablespoon minced onion. Four cups chicken broth. One half cup heavy cream. One teaspoon lemon juice. Two large ripe avocados. One quarter cup dry sherry. Salt and pepper to taste. One banana, optional. Peel, seed, and chop the tomato. Place first five ingredients in blender or processor and blend well. Heat this mixture in a saucepan and simmer for a few minutes. Peel and mash avocados and stir into soup. Add sherry, salt, and pepper to taste and heat well but do not allow to boil. Serve hot or cold. Decorate each bowl with two or three thin slices of banana for an extra touch of flavor. Serve six. End of section five. Read by Kerry Adams, your book voice, at Mesa, Arizona, on the 21st of March, 2022. Section 6 of A Taste of New Mexico Kitchens. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read by Betty B. A Taste of New Mexico Kitchens by Anonymous. Breads. Flour, tortillas. Two cups flour, one teaspoon salt, one half teaspoon baking powder, optional, four tablespoons lard, one half to three quarter cup lukewarm water. Mix dry ingredients, then work in lard until mixture is crumbly. Stir in the half cup of water, adding more if needed. Knead dough on a lightly floured board, then make into small balls about the size of an egg. Let these stand covered by a tea towel for about 15 minutes, then roll out to the size of a salad or luncheon plate. Bake on a hot, ungreased griddle for two minutes. Turn and bake for one minute on the other side. They should have a brown, freckled surface. Use immediately or keep warm until serving by placing between the folds of a clean tea towel. If necessary, they may be refrigerated in plastic bags and reheated, but they're better when they're fresh. Quickie Tortillas Angie M. Garcia recommends this as a quick an easy method of making flour tortillas. One tube refrigerator biscuits, flour. Use plain or buttermilk biscuits. On a floured surface, pat out each biscuit to desired thickness, one eighth to one quarter inch. Place each tortilla on a hot griddle, 475 to 500 degrees Fahrenheit, and cook for about two minutes. Turn and cook on the other side until done. Makes 10. Sopapillas. Although they are kin to fry bread and cousin to buñuelos, New Mexico's sopapillas are unique. There's nothing in the world quite like these light, crispy bread puffs. Two cups flour, two teaspoons baking powder, one teaspoon salt, two tablespoons lard, one half cup water, shortening for frying. 
Sift dry ingredients together. Work in lard and lukewarm water to make a soft dough. Chill in refrigerator. Roll out dough on a floured surface to about one quarter inch thickness. Cut into three inch squares. Deep fry in hot lard or vegetable shortening at 400 degrees Fahrenheit a few at a time. Brown on each side and drain on paper towels. Serve piping hot. To eat, poke open and pour in honey or slather with honey butter. Honey butter. Cream one cup butter or margarine. Gradually beat in one half cup to one cup of honey. If your honey has begun to crystallize, you can use the larger amount. Cover and store in refrigerator. Serve with sopapillas. Good also on hot biscuits or toast. Chili bread. Here's a surprising raised dough ring that will make chili lovers wake up and sing. Glenna Rose Autry of Santa Fe dreamed it up. One package dry yeast, one quarter cup warm water, four and one half cups flour, one half cup melted butter, one cup warm milk, one quarter cup sugar, one teaspoon salt, one egg, one and one half cups finely chopped onion, one half cup melted butter, three tablespoons red chili powder, or one half cup chopped green chili. Dissolve yeast in water, mix in two cups of the flour, butter, milk, sugar, salt, and egg. Beat for two minutes. Add enough flour to make a stiff dough. Turn onto a floured board and knead until smooth. Put in a greased bowl, turn over and cover with a clean cloth. Put bowl in a warm place with no drafts and let dough rise until doubled, about one hour. Combine remaining ingredients for filling. Punch down dough and roll into a 20 by 8 inch rectangle. Cut into four 20 by 2 inch strips. Spread filling on each strip and fold over lengthwise. Twist two strips together, then twist double strips together and form in a circle on greased cookie sheet. Cover with clean cloth and let rise until doubled. Brush with beaten egg and sprinkle with chili powder. Bake at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 40 minutes. Navajo fry bread. Three cups flour, one and one half teaspoons baking powder, one half teaspoon salt, one and one third cups warm water, shortening. Use either all white or half whole wheat flour. Mix flour, baking powder, and salt. Add warm water and mix. Dough should be soft but not sticky. Knead until smooth. Tear off a chunk about the size of a peach. Pat and stretch until it is thin. Poke a hole through the middle and drop into sizzling hot deep fat. Lard is the traditional shortening, but you might prefer to use vegetable oil. Brown on both sides, drain and serve hot. Eat with honey or jam. Blue Cornbread From the northern part of the Navajo Reservation comes this unusual recipe. Obviously, the recipe is not for the average American kitchen, but it shows the remarkable ingenuity of people who must use the ingredients available far from supermarkets. One cup cedar ashes, one cup hot water, one pound blue cornmeal, one quart water. The cedar ashes, really from juniper wood, locally called cedar, should be smooth and fine. Sieve, if possible, mix the ashes with hot water and remove any twigs or other bits of rough material. Add to blue cornmeal. Pour in water gradually, adding only enough to make a soft dough. Form into cakes about a half inch thick. Smooth the surface of the cakes with water. Cook on a medium hot grill on each side until the cakes are done. Use like bread. Pan de la Reina. Alicia Romero contributed this delicious holiday bread recipe to New Mexico Magazine many years ago. One envelope yeast, one half cup warm water, one teaspoon sugar, four cups flour, one cup butter or margarine, one half teaspoon salt, two tablespoons sugar, six eggs beaten, one cup milk, one teaspoon anise seeds. Dissolve the yeast in warm water. Mix in one teaspoon sugar and just enough flour to make a soft ball. Cover and place in a warm place to rise for at least an hour. Add the remaining flour, melted butter, salt, sugar, eggs, milk, and anise seeds, and mix and knead until smooth and velvety. Cover and let rise to double its original bulk. Punch down and knead slightly. Pull off small pieces, 
Mold into balls and place in a greased tube pan. Cover and set in warm place and let rise until double in size. Bake at 350 degrees Fahrenheit until it is brown and shining. Rub the surface with melted butter. End of section 6. Section 7 of A Taste of New Mexico Kitchens. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read by Betty B. A Taste of New Mexico Kitchens by Anonymous. Desserts. Empanaditas. Rich and delectable, these mincemeat turnovers mean Christmas to many a New Mexico boy and girl. This is Martha Montoya's traditional recipe. Filling. Two beef tongues, two cups sugar, one teaspoon salt, two teaspoons cinnamon, one teaspoon allspice, one tablespoonful vanilla, one cup raisins, one cup roasted shelled pignon nuts, two tablespoons blackberry brandy. Cover well-washed tongues with water in a large kettle and simmer until tender, about one hour. Cool and peel. Retain one cup of the tongue broth. Grind meat in a grinder and place in a large bowl. Add remaining ingredients and mix well with hands, using tongue broth to moisten. Let mixture stand while you prepare pastry. Pastry. Five cups flour, one teaspoon salt, three tablespoons sugar, three-quarter cup shortening, part lard, one-half cup evaporated milk, one-half cup water. Sift flour into a large bowl and add salt and sugar. Cut in shortening. Mix in milk and water to form a soft dough. Knead dough with hands for about three minutes. Form dough into balls about one and one-half inches in diameter. Roll out on floured board. Place one teaspoon filling on half circle of dough, folding over other half circle to enclose. Pinch edges of dough together to prevent filling from leaking. Deep fry empanaditas a few at a time in moderately hot oil, 350 degrees Fahrenheit until golden brown, turning once. Drain on paper towels, makes about four and a half dozen empanaditas. Empanaditas taste best when eaten warm. They may be placed on a cookie sheet and reheated in a 300 degree Fahrenheit oven. Pink Adobe French Apple Pie And here it is, that famous French apple pie. Rosalia of the Pink Adobe says she has no idea how many she's made over the years. Thousands, hundreds of thousands, maybe millions. Forget about calories when you eat this concoction. Two cups flour, three-quarter cup lard, one teaspoon salt, cold water. One pound apples, one half teaspoon nutmeg, one half teaspoon cinnamon, two tablespoons lemon juice, one quarter cup seedless raisins, one half cup sugar, one cup brown sugar, two tablespoons flour, one half cup one quarter pound butter, one half cup chopped pecans, one quarter cup milk. Work flour, lard, and salt together until crumbly. Add six or seven tablespoons cold water until dough holds together. Form into two balls. Roll out to line and top a nine inch pie pan. Filling. Wash, peel, core, and slice apples into pie shell. Sprinkle with lemon juice, nutmeg, and cinnamon. Spread with raisins and white sugar. Mix brown sugar, flour, and butter. Spread over contents. Sprinkle with pecans and most of milk. Cover with pastry, prick with fork, and brush with remaining bit of milk. Bake at 450 degrees Fahrenheit for 10 minutes. Reduce heat to 350 degrees Fahrenheit and bake for another 30 minutes. Serve hot with hard sauce. Hard sauce. One half cup butter, one and one half cup confectioners or powdered sugar, one tablespoon boiling water, one teaspoon brandy or rum. Cream the butter until light. Beat in the sugar and add one tablespoon boiling water. Then beat in brandy. Serve with French apple pie. Baked empanadas. New Mexico State University's Cooperative Extension Service is a gold mine of recipes. If you can't eat deep fried foods, you might want to try their version of baked empanadas. Three ounces cream cheese, one half cup butter or margarine, one cup flour, one cup thick applesauce. 
Cream butter or margarine with cream cheese until fluffy. Add flour and mix until a smooth ball is formed. Wrap well and refrigerate for at least four hours or overnight. Remove from refrigerator one half hour before using. Roll out dough on a floured board to one eighth inch thickness. Cut in approximately three inch rounds. Place one tablespoon of applesauce on each round. Fold over and seal flute edges. Bake at 375 degrees Fahrenheit, 15 to 20 minutes. Serve warm with a sprinkle of powdered sugar. May be served with ice cream if desired. This dough is very tricky and hard to handle. Biscochitos. This is New Mexico's traditional cookie. Six cups flour, one quarter teaspoon salt, three teaspoons baking powder, one pound, two cups lard, one and one half cups sugar, two teaspoons anise seeds, two eggs, one quarter cup brandy, one quarter cup sugar, one tablespoon cinnamon. Sift flour with baking powder and salt. Cream lard with sugar and anise seeds until fluffy. Beat in eggs one at a time. Mix in flour and brandy until well blended. Turn dough out on floured board and pat or roll to one quarter or one half inch thickness. Cut into shapes. The fleur de lis is traditional. Dust with mixture of sugar and cinnamon. Bake 10 minutes at 350 degrees Fahrenheit or until browned. Pignon Cookies Mary and Meyer gave us this marvelous cookie recipe using New Mexico's favorite nuts. Four eggs, one and one half cups granulated sugar, one half teaspoon grated lemon rind, two and one half cups sifted flour, one quarter teaspoon salt, one quarter cup confectioner's sugar, one cup pignon nuts. Put eggs and granulated sugar in the top of a double boiler over hot water. Beat with rotary or electric beater until mixture is lukewarm. Remove from water, beat until foaming and cool. Add lemon rind and fold in flour and salt. Drop by teaspoonfuls onto greased and floured cookie sheets. Sprinkle with confectioner's sugar and nuts. Let stand for 10 minutes. Bake in moderately hot oven, 375 degrees Fahrenheit for about 10 minutes. Mix five dozen cookies. Pignon fudge, three cups sugar, one thirteen ounce can evaporated milk, one teaspoon vanilla, one half cup pignon nuts. Melt one cup of the sugar in heavy pan, stirring with wooden spoon until dark brown. Add rest of sugar and stir in milk gradually. Cook to hard ball stage. A drop forms a hard ball in cold water. Remove from burner, add vanilla, beat until creamy, fold in nuts, Pour into buttered eight inch pan. When firm, cut in squares. End of section seven. Section eight of A Taste of New Mexico Kitchens. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read by Betty B. A Taste of New Mexico Kitchens by Anonymous. Drinks and Glossary. Rancho de Chimeo Cocktail. This apple cocktail was created by Arturo Jeromillo, owner of the famous Rancho de Chimeo restaurant. A thoroughly New Mexican drink, it makes good use of Chimeo apples and cider. One and one half ounces tequila, one ounce homemade New Mexico sweet apple cider, one quarter ounce lemon juice, one quarter ounce creme de cassis. Shake all ingredients together, chill, and serve with a wedge of New Mexico apple over the rim of the glass. Serves one. Rosalie's Apricot Brandy. Rosalie Howland says this is great to sip and is superb as a topping for vanilla ice cream. One pound dried apricots, one pound sugar, one quart vodka. Mix together in a glass container and store for six to eight weeks in a cool dark place shake every other day or so so flavors meld glossary bizcochito new mexico's traditional cookie burrito a flour tortilla wrapped around a filling of beans meat or both with grated cheese and chili sauce on top calabacitas zucchini chicos cooked sweet corn kernels that have been dried in the sun empanadita 
a deep fried mincemeat turnover enchiladas a cornmeal tortilla either blue or yellow corn wrapped around or layered with meat chicken or cheese and covered with red or green chili sauce frijoles beans usually pinto beans frijoles refritos cooked pinto beans that have been refried huevos eggs piñon nuts the nuts from the cones of the piñon tree pozole white corn kernels that have been treated with lime to soften the kernel's tough outer skin to facilitate cooking hominy calitas spinach including wild spinach sopapillas a deep fried bread that puffs up to resemble small pillows taco a corn tortilla that has been deep fried folded in half to hold meat cheese lettuce and tomatoes tamale thick masa harina paste wrapped around a red chili sauce with pork meat filling enclosed in corn husks and steamed before eating end of section eight end of a taste of new mexico kitchens by anonymous